Westminster College has the privilege of employing many esteemed faculty members who take a true passion in their field. Among these people is Dr. Clarence Harms. During his 40 years at Westminster, he has played many important roles, including professor and chair of the biology department, dean of the college, and his current position, director of the field station. With a majority of his career spent in the field of biology, Harms says he developed a love for nature as a young boy growing up on a farm in southwestern Kansas. I fell in love with the out of doors from the standpoint of plants and animals. I loved to watch ants play when I was a kid and a variety of bugs and things like that. So biology was a natural for me. Although he knew he wanted to be a teacher, Harms says at first he never really considered working at a college. And a college teacher took me aside one day and gave me basically a kick in the butt to tell me that I ought to consider college teaching. So I went on to graduate school. In 1968, Harms began his time at Westminster. As a professor, he taught field zoology. He says the land surrounding campus offers many interesting research topics dealing with nature. We mapped the field station for the location of groundhog holes, burrows, and we made observations, for example, as to when they go down and hibernate. Of the many projects he undertook as chair of the biology department, the development of the field station has had the most impact on his career. Harm explains it was a project that took a long time to get off the ground due to a lack of money. The college agreed that we could use it, but that we didn't have a budget. In other words, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, but here's no money. Uh, we had no money, no equipment. Uh, no tractors, no, no, nothing to, so we whittled around a little bit here and there. Harm says it took a lot of fundraising and help from grants and alumni to make the field station the place it is today. I'm one who does not like to sell. When I was in high school, we would have to sell Christmas cards or something to raise money for our class project, and I would end up buying those myself, but I don't mind raising money for a good cause now. I'm very comfortable tapping alumni on the shoulder who I know can afford it. Harms took on the role of field station director in 1983. Then in 85, he received a unique request that would take him away from biology for a few years. We had just had a president resign very uh, almost abruptly. And so the board of trustees elected to bring in an interim administration. I was on the search committee for the acting president, and uh, we filled that position. And then the acting president appeared on my, on the 4th of July, appeared at my front door to ask if I would consider being dean of the college. And I wasn't excited about that. I don't like paper shuffling. And that's mm -hmm. partly what a, what a dean has to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I agreed. I respected the, the, the president and uh, agreed to come in two years maximum, which I did. After a short time as dean, Harms went back to his roles in the biology department. Then in 2003, he retired from teaching, but continued part-time as director of the field station. Harms says he was happy to get back out into nature. I enjoy the out of doors. I'm a field biologist by, by profession, meaning that I don't mind being out in the rain. I, uh, I never use an umbrella. I put a poncho on if I if it rains. Harm spends his time at the field station on many projects including weather data analysis and a new composting operation. Harms explains the composting began three years ago with the help from a grant from the Department of Environmental Protection. Harms says leaves, branches, and food waste from the campus and community are gathered and brought to the field station to be composted. On a monthly basis, I handle about a ton and a half, that would be about almost 3,000 pounds of food waste that comes from the main campus. Harms is also very active in the community. A member of the Kiwanis, they collect and send old athletic shoes to Nike for recycling. Harms also interacts with young kids from the community. Preschool classes often take trips to the field station for learning activities. Harms says working with the children keeps him young and also teaches him new things. Their curiosity is also entertaining. One day the kids were out without their parents being too watchful and all of a sudden they were on top of a manure pile and <laughs> we get manure from the stable next door for composting and so I told the mothers, the mothers were more accept upset than the kids, the kids didn't mind that they a little, little bit of dirt here, a little bit of dirt there. As far as environmental issues go, Harm says one of his biggest concerns is the management of resources versus their use. And I think we need to take your generation in your mind a hundred years down the road. In other words, when you're gone, what's the world going to be like?
But Harms is optimistic. He says there is hope for the future if everyone, including Westminster, is willing to change their way of life to better the environment. That means as um, less consumption, willingness to sacrifice if necessary, and, and certainly to uh, help your children, if you choose to have children, to manage their resources. With so much going on with the environment, Harm says he has no plans of retiring from the field station quite yet. He says for him, biology is still intriguing and exciting. One of the things that I like about it is that you can be an indoor biologist or an outdoor biologist, or you can do a combination. Really, that's what I did, inside-outside kind of thing, but never forgetting the outside. That's where biology really happens with the bugs and the grass and the trees and so forth. I'm Allison King for Titan Radio News.